here today, but things got turned around. So unfortunately, you're going to have to wait a little longer to, to have him here. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are just yearning. To <laughs> <laughs> I know that you miss him so much. You miss him standing here so much, but just have to wait <laughs> one more week and he'll be standing right here. Amen? Can I get an amen? Amen. Oh, that was a weak amen. <laughs> if they said like that, he might have want to come here. That's <laughs> okay, can I get an amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it no matter what is going on in the world around us, no matter what might be going on with our relatives, our acquaintances. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice. Amen. Amen. So once again, I want to welcome all who are here. Welcome our longtime friend who hasn't been here for a while. <laughs> so long. A year and three months. <laughs> Stayed away. And we couldn't see her or hear it. Well, we heard from her. But we told her that she might have to walk with an ID because we want to make sure that it's the same person that left. <laughs> and if she didn't show back up, we're going to sell her house. Yep. Yeah. And she didn't show back. So, yeah, her house and her car <laughs> as a bonus. <laughs> so, welcome again to Mrs. Black, our dear Mrs. Black. And welcome to everybody who's sitting here. Good to see you, good to have you. And to those who would be watching later, we want to welcome you to Restore and Church of the Living God, where we believe that God wants to restore lives. And he is able to do that if we will let him. But it is our pleasure and our privilege to be able to be a part of this ministry that he himself started in us. So welcome from Wayne and myself, Sandra, and we just give God praise for you, give God thanks, and it's a privilege for me to be able to minister the word today. I never ever take this lightly. Like you, I'm listening for what the Spirit will say, like you, I'm sitting before him and sitting before this word, which is as a mirror. When you look into the word, when you look into a mirror, you don't walk away from the mirror and forget what you look like. So this, this word is a mirror. We look into it and we see what is going on here. And if there's anything in our lives, any spot or any wrinkle, like you look into a mirror when you're getting dressed and you fix this and you fix that, this is what the word does for us. Amen. So. This morning, I'd like to minister on the scripture taken from Proverbs chapter 14, and we're going to spend some time in 14. We're going to go to different places, but Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 34. Now, we have heard the scripture over and over again, but have we taken the time to ponder and really examine what the scripture means? Hallelujah. Read this with me, please, everybody, if you can see it. What does it say? Righteousness with the nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. Let's read that again. Righteousness exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Mm. I'm sure we have heard that scripture many times over. And I don't know how much thought we have given to the scripture. I think most of us understand <coughs> the meaning of it. But I want to just kind of explore a little bit with you. What is righteousness? And that's something we have to ask ourselves for us to really understand what the scripture is saying. What, what really is righteousness? And I'm sure each person sitting here and those listening later would have his or her, her own personal opinion about what righteousness is. So
So the Webster Dictionary says that righteousness is the quality or the state of being righteous. It's holiness, it's purity <coughs> of heart, uprightness. And so you may say, well, by whose standard? By whose standard is this? I, I could say, this is right. And you could say, no, this right here is right. What you're saying is not right. What, what I'm saying here is right. And, and each of us could have different opinions about what righteousness would be. Um, so whose standard are we looking at? Is it our parents, um, our employers, our friends, our acquaintances? Is it their standard that we're basing the definition of righteousness on? Is it the government's um, standard that we're looking at? Think about that. Webster's Dictionary also defines righteousness as conformity of heart and life to the divine law. Hmm. So if I'm going to conform to something, it means I'm going to surrender my own thoughts, my own ways, and say, okay, I'm going to throw this out, and I'm going to hold on to this. I'm going to conform to this. I'm going to say, okay, I I'm going to agree with this as the guide to walking in righteousness. So it's a conformity of heart and life, the whole life, to the divine law. And divine has to do with whom? God. God. So the standard for righteousness are the measuring stick. You know, we take a ruler and we measure stuff mark it off and we know exactly how we are to cut a piece of tile or board or whatever it is we know exactly where we're going so we don't mess up right so the measuring stick for righteousness is God's divine law and I'm not talking about just the Ten Commandments I'm not talking about that in Isaiah 64 and verse 6. Let's look at that. And I know you've heard that several times over. Um, Brother Gary, can you read from up here for me, please? Can you see that? Yeah, it says, Isaiah 64, 6, 6, but we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rats, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquity is like the wind has taken us away. All right, thank you. So all of our righteousnesses, I think it's a nesses, right? So your righteousness, your righteousness, your righteousness, your righteousness, yours, yours, and mine put together. Mm. All the right things that we could do, all the right actions, all the right attitudes, um, the right intentions that you and I have put together. Think about it. Those of us here and those in the rest of the world put together all of that. All the different good things that you and I do. And we do some good things, don't we? We help people. We speak kindly to them. Sometimes we might not want to say some stuff because of what's going on at the time. But we say, no, I'm going to be kind in my actions, I'm going to be kind in my words. All of these things put together, what does the Bible say? say? Oh my gosh, those things are wonderful. Oh, I commend you all. What does the Bible say? Filthy, right. what? Mm -hmm. No way. Hold on, hold on. Is God really, really looking? Because I know that out of the intents of my heart, I did this right deed here. I helped Mary Jane to walk across the street because, you know, she's like 85 or 90 and, and I see her doing this. You know, and, and, and I want to make sure that when I get over to the other side of the street that she's over there too with me and that a car doesn't come and, and, and hit her, right? I, I want to make sure that I'm, so didn't God see when I did that? Hold up now. He must have been asleep at that time or he was tending to something else and he didn't see when I did that. But that was, that was good, wasn't it? Wouldn't you say? Um, I helped somebody to take care of something. Isn't that a good deed? 
yet the Bible says that all of our righteousness is that filthy rags. filthy rags that we don't even want to touch because they're filthy. And it's not that anything is wrong with helping somebody across the street or helping somebody with something, right? That is not the point. The point is that no matter how good these things are, they cannot come up to God's righteousness, his standard. Because if you and I could do those things and get by according to God's standard, then he would not have to send whom? Jesus Christ. He would have said, you know what? They're, 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 they're trying their best, you know. They're doing so, I mean, they go out of their way to help somebody. Wow, you know what? That's good enough for me. He said, no, nope! not good enough. Because you see, the heart of man is what? And desperately wicked. Because even though we can help Mary Jane across the street right now, the next five, ten minutes, we could curse out somebody. <laughs> so we're like, oh, we can't maintain it. We start doing it at maybe eight o'clock or nine or ten, and by six o'clock, it's it's all gone. We're like, oh, okay, I'll start tomorrow morning again at about eight o'clock, nine, as early as I possibly can to be righteous. <laughs> we're gonna start again. And oh, at the end of the day, Mrs. Black, what happens? We've messed up again because the heart of man is just not that way to maintain that kind of righteousness. It's just the grace of God. It's just God's righteousness, really. So, filthy rights. Man's standard is not good enough where righteousness is concerned. So being good, we said no, we shouldn't be good then? Yes. We're good, we're kind, we're considerable, etc. That can be considered righteous. But we've got to line up to God's standard of righteousness. So what is his standard of righteousness, one may ask. I'm so glad you asked. Was it you who asked? The Holy Spirit asked? <laughs> okay. And maybe he did. What is his standard of righteousness? Could this be it? Walking with my head down, looking holy. I'm trying. I'm trying not to laugh. <laughs> okay, being very serious here, because some people think that if you're like this, especially in church, <laughs> they can't do it. So I must not be rich. <laughs> if you do this. They believe if you're like this. And you look sad. No smiling, no laughter, no joking around. And you're holy. <laughs> okay, is that what it is all about? No, it isn't, is it? Okay, so obedience to God's word, to his will and to his word, is part of his standard of righteousness. Think about it. He didn't say, if you go around like this, I will consider you righteous. If you don't do this and if you don't do that, I'll consider you righteous. Look at Deuteronomy 6, 25. God, you're so good. Deuteronomy chapter 6. I don't know if I've seen this before. But I thought this was a pretty good explanation. I'd like to get somebody else to read that for us. Please. Mrs. Black, can you see it from where you are? Definitely. All right, just. And, and Deuteronomy 6, 25. Yes. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord of God, when he has commanded us. Okay, so this was talking to the Israelites. 
when they had already left Egypt and they were heading to Canaan. And God was more or less telling them what his standard of righteousness was and still is. And when we say the law here, we're not just talking about the Ten Commandments. Whatever God himself says we are to do, and guess what? You know where that is? In his love letter to us. This is his love letter. What a long love letter. Has anybody ever written a love letter? Okay, you don't have to put your hands up because I know that you all have. <laughs> okay. In that, you're expressing to the loved one how you feel. And more or less, sometimes yeah, you're telling them, you know, you're letting them know who you are, too, in, in the letters. They're, they're, by the time they read, read your letter, they will know who you are. So God, in this love letter, his word, his precious word, he's telling us, look, you don't know how to walk, but I, your parent, I'm going to tell you how you can walk, right? Your heart is going to fail you because, as we said earlier, the heart of man is and desperately wicked, evil, desperately wicked above all things, who can know it, God. So I, your parent, God himself, I'm going to show you how to walk. These things that I'm telling you, they're for your good, actually. And if you observe, if you obey these things, that is going to be counted as righteousness to you. Because you're going to be doing the right thing. If I say to you, don't walk on that side, but walk on this other side. If you say, uh, I know you're telling me, Lord, not to walk on that side, but that side looks really, really good from where I'm standing. Hello, Lord, I think you might need to clean your glasses up a little because that other side that you're telling me to walk on, mm, I see all kind of stuff there. But if God says, this is where you're to walk, surely, being God, he knows why. Because he knows that if you are to walk on this other side, somewhere along the line, further up the road, there is going to be a problem, right? And so he expects us, with our limited vision, right? We see right here, he sees further. He expects us now to say, okay, you're my parent, you're my father. I might not see it, I might not understand it, but because you're the righteous God, and you're telling me I'm to do this, guess what? If I'm obedient, if I listen, and if I follow the directions, if I surrender my will to your will, then that is gonna be considered as righteousness. Isn't that amazing though? That's amazing. And um, another thing, another standard that we can look at, God's standard of, of righteousness is Faith in God, faith in God. Placing your faith and your trust and your belief in God is considered righteousness. Let's look at, to show you that this is so, let's look at Genesis chapter 15 and verse six. So, Sister Veronica, I know you're closer here so you can see it very, very well. <laughs> can you see that, is it too close? Oh, your eyes are clear. Okay, all right then. So, 15 and verse 6. Listen to this. Who is going to read? Wayne or Charles? Can you see this? Yep. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all the things. Oh, this is the Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? I'm sorry. These. Ver these these scriptures came later because I finished it up this morning. Okay, so Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 25. Genesis 15 and verse 6. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Genesis 15 and 6. Yes. And he believes, and he believed us in the Lord. And he counted it to him for righteousness. And who is this talking about right here? Abraham. Abraham. 
Father, thank you so much. The father of faith, he just believed God. I mean, every step of the way, when God was saying, do this, do that. Take your son, your only son, Isaac, sacrifice him. He didn't question God. He's like, God, really? This is my ear, the one you told me about. Really, Lord? Um, um, Lord, what, on what side of the bed did you get up this morning, Lord? Um, Lord, this is, this is not right here. He never even questioned God. And, and as I said some time ago, if he had ever told Sarah, his wife, that he was going to take Isaac, their only son, up to the mountain to sacrifice him, guess what? She would have said, have you lost your mind? I don't think he said anything to her. He left with his son. And he was intent on obeying God, believing that God would, would raise up somebody else as an heir because God had already promised him. But God wanted to test Abraham's faith. He wanted to see, can I trust this man? Can I really trust this man, Abraham? What did he do? He just believed. And God said, oh, so you believe? Okay. Let me get my book out here. Let me do my calculations here. Let me do my math work here. Da, 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 da. Let me count. One, two, three, four. Equals righteousness. God looked at Abraham's belief in him, his faith and his trust in him, and said, this right here adds up to righteousness. Because Abraham was going like this. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Is that why God said that he was righteous? No, because he believed. Mm, are we getting into something now? Now you and I become righteous when we believe that Jesus died for our sins and the cleansing power that comes from the atonement, which is his cleansing blood. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And I'd like to read, um, if you can pull that up for me, Romans 3, 21 to 22, the amplified version though. Because I think I have that on my phone. But, Romans 3, 21, to 22, talking about the, the atonement for our sins and the fact that we become righteous when we put our trust in Jesus. Romans chapter 3, verses 21 to 22. Okay, we can read this, and then in the meantime, I want to also read the Amplified version of this. All right. So Romans 3, 21 to 22. Please read with me if you can. It says, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Verse 22, even the righteousness of God, which is by what? Faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that do what? Believe, for there is no difference. Okay. So, I don't know if you have the Amplified version there of 321 to 22. The Amplified version says, but now the righteousness of God has been clearly revealed independently and completely apart from the law, though it is actually confirmed by the law and the words and writings of the prophets. And what about the other verse? This righteousness of God comes through faith in Christ, in Jesus Christ, for all those, Jews and Gentiles, who believe and trust in Him and acknowledge Him as God 
son. There is no distinction. Okay, thank you. So, I think at this point, this has been a little journey, hasn't it? It's, it's established that righteousness, according to God's standard, not ours, not the government's, not our parents, not our friends, not our family, but this righteousness, according to God's standard, is based on our belief, our obedience. Amen? And the righteousness here is through Jesus Christ. When we place our trust and our faith in what he did for us on Calvary, and when we allow the blood of Jesus to cleanse us from our sin, we automatically become righteous. Though, does that mean that then we can just go around and do whatever we did before? No, not at all. No. There's a scripture that says, because grace abounds, does that mean that we should, sin should abound too? No, because there's a whole lot of grace flowing, no. Once we place our trust in Jesus, he brings us into that place of righteousness. We could not get to that place by ourselves, by our own righteous deeds, which we still do those things, but that is not what makes us righteous. It's the blood of Jesus Christ being applied to our lives that makes us righteous. It's the blood of Jesus. We come through the blood and we become righteous. That's it. So we have nothing to boast about. It's the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus that makes us righteous. So it is this same righteousness that we read about when we just started in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 34. It is the same righteousness that will exalt a nation. It's not the righteousness that we mentioned before where we are kind to people, where we bend backwards and do stuff, kind to each other, love each other. It, is, it, is, it, ex, it, it goes further than that. It is God's righteousness in us, those who believe, those who have placed their trust and have received the application of the blood of Jesus. That is the righteousness that is going to exalt any nation. And what, what does exalt mean? Righteousness exalts a nation. What is that? Well, when I looked it up, it says to think when you exalt something or somebody you think or speak very highly of somebody. You exalt somebody or something. You raise that person or that thing to a higher rank or position. You elevate that person. So think about Think about a, a, a nation being exalted. How does a nation get exalted? Righteousness exalted a nation. And if you think about it, when other nations talk about a certain nation, if that nation is practicing righteousness according to God's standard, then other nations are gonna look at that particular nation and say, wow, you know, those people are doing so well over there. We notice that they live long. You know, we notice that somehow they have good relations with the other countries around them. We notice that other countries want to go to that country. Um, they, they don't have a whole lot of poverty that we're seeing or oppression or all kinds of stuff. And we do understand that in the last days certain things are gonna take place, we understand that. But when righteousness exists, when God's standard of righteousness is observed in that nation continually, it is a heartbeat of the nation. The righteousness of God abides in that nation. That nation is going places. 
other countries are going to be speaking about that nation. Say, how is it that this is happening there? We don't have that in our nation. Oh, look at look at those people. They're prospering. They're doing so well. Why is that? And if we inquire further, Mrs. Black, Sister Black, if we inquire further, guess what? We will realize, you know, those people, we notice that they love God. We notice that they serve God. Oh my God. Righteousness does exalt a nation. Now, let's look at sin. Hmm, what it says, righteousness, let's go back to Proverbs. Again, chapter 14, verse 34. Just, I want you to look at it. Sin, what does it say? Sin, it says, you know, the but, so that's, that means there's something negative. Two different things. You have righteousness on one side, then you have sin on the other side. Sin is what? What is sin? What does it say it is? A reproach. Why is it that sin is not exalting the nation? Man, why is that? You know why? Sin is defined as an immoral act considered to be a transgression against divine law, God's law, God's standard, what he requires. So anything that is going against the word trans means I'm here and I'm crossing over to here. Trans. I, tr I just transitioned. I went over to the other side. So look at this. And the word aggression means movement. So God says, remember we were talking about the two roads and God says, I want you to go down that road, don't go down this road, right? Are you going to be obedient or not? So when we start out here on God's road, the one he says we're to follow, and then somewhere along the line, some other stuff comes in there, and we hear some other voices over here say, come over here, man, come over here, do this, come and do this. And we're, mm, you know what? Sounds pretty good what I'm hearing here. I'm going to trans. I'm gonna move from where I was, from God's way. I'm gonna come over this side. I'm gonna transition. I'm gonna move, move across. I'm transitioning, I'm transgressing from God's ways, from God's holy law, from what he requires. Reproach, what does that mean? It's an expression of disapproval or disappointment. It's a rebuke, actually. So, who is disapproving? You know who is disapproving right here? It's a reproach to any people. It's God's disapproval we're talking about. Um, and there are some examples of reproach, which is God's disapproval being shown. And I know we will remember Sodom and Gomorrah, where it's, God said that the, the, the sin of the cities, those two cities, just so great. He said, my God, it came up into my nostrils and it's a stench. Oh, I can't deal with it. This is too much. I'm going to go down and see what, what, what can be done about that situation. We, we, we dealt with that some time ago, if you remember, where, um, because they practiced homosexuality in these cities. And God said, oh! No, oh, can't deal with it. And so, if you recall, of course, through his mercy, um, Lot and his family came out, except his wife looked back. But Lot and his family came out. But God poured down fire and brimstone on these two cities. And maybe because he knew they just would not repent. Because God is always, always, um, so merciful and so gracious that he will go the extra mile so that you and I will finally say, I repent, I turn around, I'm going to take your way, God. I'm going to go your way. But he must have known that Sodom and Gomorrah just didn't want that. But still, some were rescued from that fire and brimstone. That, that's, that's one of the examples of sin 
been a reproach. It was a, a stench. It was God disapproved highly. Egypt, when, of course, Pharaoh hardened his heart, and, and, and his heart was already hard. I know the scripture says God hardened his heart. His fist was already hard. And he showed forth his glory when he delivered, if you remember, the children of Israel by the Red Sea, and so many different times, even after that, in the wilderness. But Pharaoh and Egypt went under when they tried to pursue the Israelites when they were crossing over the Red Sea. Do you recall that? So that was um, reproach. Sin is a reproach. It's not something that is, you say, well, we're going to, um, we're going to just show, you know, our good qualities. You know, you have people coming through, oh, let's, let's show you, let, let's, let's show off some of our city's um, good qualities, our, our accomplishments here. Oh, want to see this one? This one is sin. <laughs> it's not something you want to display. But sin is on display, and it is a reproach to any people. It's a disapproval. You know, children seek their parents' approval, and they make every attempt to do the things, either in their behavior or at school. They'll, they'll do everything to make their parents what? Proud, right? So, no child looks forward to being disciplined. I don't know of one. Anybody here just loved when your parents would take your side and say, I'm gonna give that to you. Anybody here look forward to that? I don't see any hands. <laughs> and some of us got it. I got it. I got quite a bit of it. <laughs> Thankful that I got it. Anybody else got it? Really got it? Or not really? Yes. They spared you? No. Huh? So I got it. I was the eldest, still I'm the eldest. <laughs> and I, being the eldest, I was told, you should know better and you should set an example for the others. So, psh, got it even more. Right? These days, the discipline thing is, mm, <laughs> can't really do that like what we got in the, the early days, right, Brother Garden? But God has to, had to discipline Israel on many occasions. And I know, I know you know, when you read this word, he had to discipline Israel. And when he did it, he did it out of love. He's like, my child, no, 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 come back over here. Come back, let me. My child, come back over here. Sometimes he had to do some things. He had to allow other nations to come in and, 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 and just oppress Israel. And then they cried out and said, God, forgive us, please. So sorry, God, that we went against your commands, against your requirements, against your standards. Forgive us, forgive us. He brought them back each time, but he had to discipline them. So you and I are given two options in Proverbs 14, 34, to live righteously or to live in sin. Which do you choose? Which do I choose? Let's look at, and I'm about to finish, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter four, verses five to eight. Moses is about to hand over the job and the mission of taking the children of Israel into Canaan, because if you recall from your reading, he was not allowed to go into Canaan land. He could only see it from a distance. And that was, that, that was that's a spiritual thing right there. But anyway, um, it was like the old, had to be phased out and the new was coming in through Joshua, the one that he was going to hand over to. Welcome. So, so, Moses is about to hand over to Joshua the mission of taking the children of Israel right into Canaan land, the promised land. And look at what is said right here. And this is so very important. So very important. Behold, in other words, give attention to this. I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me that he should do so in the land with the ego to possess it, which was Canaan. This is Moses telling them now. Keep, therefore, and do them 
For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. Remember we are talking before about righteousness exalting a nation? Sin is a reproach to any people. So look. Do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes, all the things that your God is telling you, Moses, is, and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Mm. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh to them, so near to them, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that had statutes and judgments, so what? Righteous. So righteous as all this law, which, which I set before you this day. And we're not just talking about the Ten Commandments. We're talking about God's requirement for us to live righteously by obeying him and by believing in him, believing in the finished work on Calvary. We can only be righteous through the blood of Jesus. All of our righteousness is as what? We said before? Filthy rags. Filthy rags. All, all of our righteousness, as good as they are. So, I just want to encourage you today and myself to observe God's laws. Observe God's commands. Observe this word, Genesis to Revelation. Our pastor years ago who went on to be with the Lord, <laughs> she used to say, this word of God here, we need to believe it from Genesis to the maps. <laughs> you know why? The maps, after you pass Revelation, then you have the maps at the back here, right? With Israel and different places. So she, she says, just believe everything from here right back to the maps. <laughs> mm -hmm. So God really, he wants us as a nation. Well, let me start at the beginning. As an individual, because individuals make up communities. Communities make up what? A city. A city will make up a whole nation. So it starts with us individually and sometimes we point the finger we tend to want to point the finger at others and say well this one isn't doing that and that one isn't doing that so they say when you do this they're four, four you do this three pointing back this way I guess one is pointing up to God <laughs> you do this and this so we have to look at ourselves this scripture about righteousness exalting a nation it starts with the individual, because individuals make up a nation. So for our nation and for the nations of the world to be exalted, to be spoken of highly, we've got to come back to the place where we understand that we have to walk in God's ways from Genesis to Revelation. Walk in what he's telling us to do. We can't say, well, I don't know what he, I don't know what he wants me to do. Right here, just read, just read. You'll find it, it's in here what he wants you and wants me to do. Righteousness will exalt this nation of Jamaica and the nations of this world, only righteousness. But if we continue in our sin, then what does the Bible say? Sin is a reproach to any people, a reproach. It brings disapproval from our almighty God. He doesn't smile. Some people might say, well, look at all the sin we have going on in the world, and God is so quiet. He seems like he's being quiet. But when he's ready to move, watch out. Sin is a reproach. We saw it happen with Sodom and Gomorrah. We saw it happen with um, the Egyptians. And th those are only two of the many examples. If you read carefully this word, you will see many times where God decided, mm, I'm gonna do something about this. He's a merciful God, he surely is. But when the time comes, 
we will see his hand, his mighty hand, because he's God and God all by himself. And who can say to him, what are you doing? Who, who has the gumption to say, what are you doing? Because he's God, almighty God. So I just want to encourage us all today, pray for our nation and the nations of the world that again, we will come to see, not just with these eyes, but when he opens up our eyes to see the folly of our ways and to see that we are weighing in the balance, to see that we have transgressed, we have stepped across, we have moved from his righteous ways and his standard, and we're doing our own thing. And we're lifting up our fists like this in his face. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And I do believe that God wants this message to be revived because it has been spoken about. But I do believe that today, going forward, he wants this to ring in our ears and in our spirits that we need to come back to that place where we will observe, we will, we will obey, and we will believe in what Jesus Christ came to do. We will receive him into our hearts. We will say, God, save a sinner such as me. Change me. Make me, oh God, obedient. Help me, Lord God, to have the faith that I need to have in this work that you did on the cross. Because this is the only thing that can make me clean. And you know, I, I thought about this scripture, creating me a clean heart, oh God and renew a right spirit within me. Only God can do that. Change us. Only God can change this nation and the nations of the world. Let's pray that people will understand that we need to get back to righteousness. Sin might look pretty, but the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And he that hath the, hath the son hath life and has it more abundantly. Look, look, look how much God has for us. He has abundance. Look what Satan has for you and me. Destruction and death. So why choose the latter? Why not choose the righteousness that will exalt this nation and cast the sin aside, which is a reproach to any people? Well, I think that's it. I thank you so much for bearing with me. And I truly hope and pray that God, somehow somebody got something from this. It's not my word, it's God's word. And he said, when he sends his word out, it will not return to him void or empty. It will accomplish something in, in, in the hearers when his word goes forth, it accomplishes what he wants to do in that person, in you and in me, when it goes forth. So God, let your word settle in our hearts and let it perform what you want it to do in Jesus' name. Amen. I got nothing to add to that. Come on, you said you have something to add? Come on, add it. I cannot add in. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. No, 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 no. That was full. We won't. Can't. Can't expect any more. Yes. With that word, and, and that right was black. Mm -hmm. She completed it. Yes. Somebody here might have if something. somebody did not understand what she was bringing, the righteousness of God, she made it plain, right? Very plain. The word of God. We need to follow what this word says, what God says in this word. And yes, it can be difficult, right? Because we are not there yet. So we have to keep growing as babes, right? We keep growing, but we cannot lay this aside. We've got to keep growing in it so that we, we can, right, become righteous. Only through him, only through, not by us. We can't do it on our own. Right. 
And I was thinking when she was speaking about the nation, and she was talking about the righteousness that starts individually, right? I thought about, in, in the word, I've read somewhere where it, 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 it requires that the parents, right? We have to instruct the children, our children. We can't go our, our own way and leave the children to do their own way. What's gonna happen? They will not know nothing about what we know yeah. as godly parents. And what will happen with that nation? It will become an ungodly nation because the children, our children, is our future. The future of the nation. So we have to. And it's not happening. I'm afraid to say it. It is not happening. Our, we are not teaching our children to walk in the paths of God. And that's why we have so many problems in this world, in this country. All the shootings and the killings and everything else that's going on. Would a godly person do such as that? Such, 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 such as that? A righteous person do such as that? A person that was trained up, you know. No. Our righteousness are as filthy rags. And only through Jesus Christ can we get there. I can't say anything more to what she's brought, what she's spoken, unless somebody else has something. Anybody? Somebody else so God we just have to just rely on him call upon him every moment because we cannot do it on our own we cannot do it on our own we have to read this word because it's all in there the laws what he commands what he expects us to follow is in this word the Bible what is it? B-I-B-L-E Basic Instructions The pastor told us this Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth Right? Basic Instructions For us to follow Oh Lord God We thank you Father God For the word, for the instruction That We need It to be for, to hear it again sometimes we forget we hear it today and tomorrow we forget and the pastors preachers bring it and remind us what we're supposed to do so we ask the Lord God that we do not forget we do not leave this place today Lord God not following what God has instructed us to do so that we can be righteous in his eyes and we can live that abundant life that he has for us oh god help us lord god help us father god to walk that straight and narrow walk that path that we you want us to walk lord god that you can see you have have is able to know what is coming and want us to follow that direction of God, go down that path that will help us through this life, Lord God. So we thank you, God. We praise you for your wonderful ways, Lord God. Oh my God, King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh God, help us each, each one of us, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, in this life, Lord God, to keep, keep on that straight and narrow, Lord God, to follow you, Lord God. In your precious holy name. Amen. And as we play that the song, there's anybody that um, is here and um, you want to say to the Lord this morning that you want to place your trust in Him. You want to believe Him. What did you on Calvary? Receive Him if you have not done so. Here's the opportunity to do so. Because that is where righteousness starts. Amen. So as you play, as you raise your hand, pray with you, and um, it's just.
just as easy as that. Mm -hmm. It's not complicated. We tend to make it complicated. So I think phase that song. Just um, you know, close your eyes and.
Everybody is good? We're all good? All good, all good, all good. good. Praise the Lord. We just pray that God will bring us into that faith, this nation, and the other nations of the world into His righteousness as we submit to God. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. <laughs> now unto him that is able to keep you, us, from falling, and to present you, us, faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty and dominion and power, both now and ever. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah! This is from Jude 24 to 25. It's just one chapter. God is good. Yes, He Hallelujah. is. Hallelujah! All the time. Are you ready for the next service? Okay, we have an announcement to make. Thank you all so 